Good morning. Pleased to see all of you here. It's a special Sunday for us at First Lutheran here in St. James. Uh, it's our first communion Sunday, and so we are welcoming our fifth graders uh, to the table to participate in the meal in a deeper way. And we've had a couple classes about what that uh, might mean for them, uh, and so we're pleased to celebrate that. If you're visiting with us, uh, because of that, uh, or for other reasons, we just want to say welcome to you and welcome also to our uh, congregation live streaming with us today. Our radio broadcast today is provided by Mildred Basil in memory of her husband, Rein, uh, Reinhardt, and also Fred and Alice Engelbrecht. I'm going to leave the announcements to your reading, uh, and uh, let us join together in singing 593, Drawn to the Light, 593. Let us stand as you're able to sing.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, with the endless mercy, you receive the prayers of all who call upon you. By your Spirit, show us the things we ought to do, and give us the grace and power to do them. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. As I just mentioned, it's a special day for us, and we want to uh, ask... Uh, this time of First Communion to also be a time of uh, blessing and recognition. So I'm going to call up uh, our fifth graders and parents invited to come with them. Uh, and please, parents, bring up the yellow uh, insert for the blessing. So, uh, Noah Belke. Emily Broughton, Brooks Hohenstein, Kendall Malmgren, Ryder Nordland, Jager Romsdahl, J.C. Sodeman, Aubrey Solhide, and Allie Winrich. Spread out as best we can here. We're still more coming. Um, so a blessing is a word of love uh, that we can not only give in this church building, but certainly uh, in our homes. And so we uh, ask that uh, we continue to do this beyond this place. Uh, for this blessing, we want to recognize uh, the special day and pray that it will connect you more, not only just to us as a community of faith, but to Jesus, which is what Holy Communion is all about. So I ask uh, that you give a, put a hand on a shoulder uh, to accompany these words, and let us together speak these words, parents um, and families. Child of God, you are precious in the sight of God and of us. May Holy Communion strengthen you in faith and love. And people of God of the congregation, let us greet these fellow Christians with our good and godly wishes too. Welcome to the table. As you join us in this very special meal, may Jesus be close to you, and may you receive what you need from God. Uh, I'm going to uh, give the certificate. I guess I, I want the congregation to be able to see your faces, so maybe you could just turn around, uh, fifth graders, uh, so they can see you. And uh, as as you as I call out your name, please raise your hand so I make sure. I, so Noah, and the congregation can see also Emily. Oh, here we go. 
works. Kendall, Ryder, Jager, JC, Aubrey, and Allie. Okay. Let us add our applause, and you may return to your seats. Oh, actually, fifth graders, you can stay up for the children's sermon, if you would, and I'll invite other children up at this time, too. So fifth graders, if you would maybe gather up here. And other children, please come up for the children's message. to welcome you up here. Got some special music. Say, I've got uh, this from the kitchen cupboard. Whoops, let me replace it. Salt, all right? Today, in, and when Jesus speaks to us from the Bible, he says, you are salt. You are the salt in this world. And, you, and, and so he compares us to being like that, like that ingredient that we put in our food. Uh, when our fifth graders uh, met, uh, we made some bread uh, so that we can have that for our communion table today. So we made bread, and one of you put in the salt. I don't remember which one did that. But you might remember that we used one of these to put salt in for the bread, a little teaspoon. We didn't use this. We didn't use a cup, because if you put a cup of salt in your food, it would not taste very good. Or if you took a cup of salt and put it on your vegetables, that, that wouldn't taste very good. Uh, but if you put a little bit of salt on, it tastes good. And that's what I think what Jesus is saying is, we don't have to be uh, the biggest in the world. We don't have to be the most popular in the world. We just have to be like salt, just a little bit, and it makes a difference in this world. And we can be uh, people who help this world, your school, this community, to be a better place because we're here, the church. So not a lot, doesn't, it doesn't take a, a big church, although we are a big church, uh, compared to some others, but it doesn't have to be a big church. We can be a little church. We can do maybe just some things, not everything, and we can make this world a better place. So you might want to think, you could talk in your families, what things can we do to make the world a better place? Um, kindness is something we talked about a couple weeks ago. Um, care for your neighbors in your neighborhood. Uh, care for your classmates when you're in school. So those are the things that Jesus would want us to think about. So as we, uh, as we 
think about Jesus' words today, you can think about yourself as being salt, because you also uh, can be helpful to this community to make it a better place. Thanks for coming up today. It's good to see all of you here. Please read responsibly from Psalm 112. Praise the Lord. Their descendants will be mighty in the land. Wealth and riches are in their houses. They rise in the darkness as a light for the upright. They are gracious, merciful, and righteous. It is well with those who deal generously and lend. Their affairs, justice. For the righteous will never be moved. They, will be forever. they are not afraid of evil tidings. Their hearts, are firm, the their hearts are steady. They will not be afraid. They have distributed freely, they have given to the poor. Their righteousness endures forever, their glory is exalted Today's second reading is from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. When I came to you, brothers and sisters, I did not come proclaiming the mystery of God to you in lofty words or wisdom. For I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I came to you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. My speech and my proclamation were not with plausible words of wisdom, but with a demonstration of the spirit and of power, so that your faith might not rest on human wisdom, but on the power of God. Yet among the mature we do speak wisdom, though it is not a wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are doomed to perish. But we speak God's wisdom, secret and hidden, which God decreed before the ages for our glory. None of the rulers of this age understood this, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, with no, what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor human heart conceived, what God has prepared for those who love him. These things God has revealed to us through the Spirit, for the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. For what human being knows what is truly human except the human spirit that is within. So also no one comprehends what is truly God's except the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit that is from God, so that we may understand the gifts bestowed on us by God. And we speak of these things in words not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the Spirit, interpreting spiritual things to those who are spiritual. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Please stand as you are able for the verse.
The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fifth chapter. Jesus said, You are the salt of the earth. But if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is trampled out and thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter, will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. The Gospel of our Lord. Through all Epiphany we celebrate the light which shines for all to see in Jesus. Through all Epiphany we celebrate the light which shines for all to see in Jesus. Have you seen it? In the name of Jesus, amen. In just these few words, uh, we have good news brought to us today. Uh, you are the salt. You are the light. First of all, you. And Jesus uses the word uh, for plural here. You all are. And I think that's important for us to hear because uh, we are not individual Christians just kind of living individual lives. We are a community of faith. You all together are salt for this world and light for this world as God gives us ability. You are is the second good news in this. It's not you're going to be someday, not when you reach uh, the, the level of which I wish you to uh, be before I'll call you my representatives in this world. You are right now light and salt for this world. As I visited with the children and you heard, uh, salt doesn't have to be uh, great in quantity. We can make a difference. In another place of scripture, uh, the church is called the yeast in this world, which can then leaven the loaf. Um, and we are light. I have a sermon illustration right here of light and a failure of light. Um, I didn't, I could have, maybe I should claim that I purposely did that, but I, I don't know. Uh, notice the attention it was given uh, to, to get it to be a light in this world. Uh, God nurtures us in su such a way. So, uh, as salt and light, their uh, influence is not on what they do or who they are. We don't, not like a work of art where you come and gaze at the work of art. We don't come and gaze at the salt and say, this is just a wonderful thing in this world. And let's look at the light. The salt and the light illuminate or, or make taste better or illuminate or they melt the ice on the sidewalk or they... They brighten a place so you can read. <clears throat> it's what they do to others that makes them valuable. And so we pray that God would work us 
uh, not to get the attention and glory to us, but that through us we might, again, make this world a better place. One of the verses uh, in our reading today is one that be has become a part of our baptismal liturgy. After we baptize a child, uh, we uh, have a, a representative of the congregation ha uh, light a candle and say, uh, let your light so shine so that others may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Now, as I said, the you in there is plural. It sounds, <clears throat> it makes it sound like it's an individual, like it's just your light, but it really is about all of our light that we generate together as a community. And this uh, ability for us to be a community is what makes us a, a light in this world. Our ability to be a light, and this is where it's connected to baptism and it's connected to Holy Communion, our ability to be a light is not from our own efforts. It's not uh, something that we're asked to generate. It comes from our relationship to Jesus. And so once that relationship in baptism is established, now it, it, we're able to say, now you also can be a light connected to Jesus. And, and coming to the table, uh, receiving Jesus, is a way for us to be nurtured as salt and light and yeast. And, here's another phrase that Paul, St. Paul uses, and to be the body of Christ in this world. Paul says, you are the body of Christ. And so as we receive the body of Christ given for you, we say, Amen. Uh, not, I not only receive what Jesus has given me, I become the body of Christ in this world, representing Jesus, showing others uh, through good works what is the glory of God. This is good news to us today, that Jesus is here and establishes again the relationship that we need to be salt and light and the body of Christ and our relationships with one another also continue to nurture us so that we can care for one another and care for a world in need. Amen.
I ask that you pull out your scripture insert uh, again, and at the end, in the last page of that, is uh, words of confession. Although we are light and salt, we also know that we fail to be sometimes light and salt in Jesus' name. So let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Holy One, source of our renewal, we confess that we are wrapped up in sin and cannot free ourselves. We have not practiced your righteousness. Our hearts have turned away from you. For the sake of the world you love, forgive us that we may be reconciled to one another and reflect your light in our lives. In the Bible, in the Bible God says, the former things have passed away. New things I now declare. In the name of Jesus, I declare that your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus. God's mercy makes us new. Let us live as salt and light and the body of Christ in the world. Amen. Amen. Called together to follow Jesus, we pray for the world, for the church, and for all in need. Please respond to merciful God, receive our prayer. O oh God of might, call your people to seek your wisdom in difficult conversations and action. Give the church everywhere courage to repent for the ways we have tolerated and practiced injustice toward others. Open our hearts to love all humanity. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Inspire our wonder at creation, from the light of dawn to the dark of night. Help us to see the beauty of the snowflake, the benefit of moisture upon parched soil. Sustain the unseen depths of the ocean and the plants and animals we know well. Bring healing to lands and communities experiencing devastating weather and natural disasters. Especially this day, we pray for California, for our southern and northeastern states. O oh, merciful God, receive our prayer. Instruct the powerful in your ways. Provide upright leadership in business and industry that workers are not oppressed. Throughout the world, inspire voters and politicians to heed your call for nations to practice righteousness, to do justice, to love kindness, to walk humbly with you. O oh, merciful God, receive our prayer. Grant peace to endless quarrels, temper calls for retribution and vengeance, quell the violence threatening every fabric of our lives. Open our ears and hearts to understand the anguish and fear that comes from oppression and abuse. Shelter all who fearfully flee their homes or violence in their communities. Merciful God, O oh God, where hearts are fearful and constricted, grant courage and hope. Where anxiety is infectious and widening, grant peace and reassurance. Where impossibilities close every door and window, grant imagination and resistance. Where distrust twists our thinking, grant healing and illumination. Where spirits are daunted and weakened, grant soaring wings and strength and dreams. O oh, merciful God. O oh, gracious Lord, send strength and comfort to all in need of your healing touch. Calm their storms, send them peace that they may be still and hear your voice. This day we pray especially for Stan Askland, Jolene Broughton, Linda Berman, Glenda Cross, Rhonda Davidson, Jean Deegan, Vern Finisted, Sandy Friesen, Laverne Hammer, Janet Hart, LaVon Hinchin, Arlo and Marilyn Hunstead, Susan Hunstead, Aaron Keel, Susan Kuiper, Sonia Lupke, Don Mackey, Cindy Malone, Hannah Ulrich, Larry Martin, Gary Miller, Ruth Olson, Dan Panzer, Deb Ruberk, Sandy Paulson, Trevor Randall, David Rainey, Mark Richardson, Erica Rodriguez, 
Tim Samstead, Natasha Schiffler, Vev Tate, Eldora Woolley, Everett Wright, John Young, and for all others we hold in our hearts. O oh, merciful God, shape our congregation to be salt for the earth. Give us delight in your commandments that we are generous with those in need. We give thanks for those who have responded to the call to be leaders among us. Grant them joy and a spirit of bold trust that their work may stir up each of us to a life of faithful service. Be with those young people receiving their first communion today. Teach us to encourage their search for truth and value in their lives. Order their steps and guide their feet while they run the race of faith. A merciful God. All these things and more we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. We want to take a moment at uh, this time of offering to recognize uh, the offering of uh, time and talents uh, as we. Uh, welcome new leadership into our congregation. And last Sunday was our annual meeting, and uh, these many people were um, put into positions of leadership. We have over 60 names here. I'm not going to read all of them, but I do want to highlight those who are either new or uh, starting a new term. So our, our treasurer uh, for this year is going to be Scott Olson, and I'll just have you stand in place if you're here. Scott Olson. Uh, Carla Dahl is going to serve another term as our community life chair, and joining her are these three who are also renewing their terms, Tracy Anderson, Lynette Piercy, and Carissa Hansen. Our board of education, Kelly Schulte, will be serving another term as well as Haley Eichen, Madeline Malmgren, and Matt Woolley. Uh, our Board of Outreach has these who are renewing, well, Barb Bach is renewing her term, and new are Ashley Tetzloff and Lance Mickelson. Actually, Barb Bach is new too. So. And then we're going to welcome a new Meals on Wheels coordinator, Don Zollers. Our Board of Properties, Tom Eng, is going to renew his term, and new to that board are Ron Aiden and Greg Halverson. Our Board of Stewardship, new are Lori Soderman, Molly Westman, Gary Blum, and renewing her term, Mary Evers. And then Board of Worship, Music, and Arts, renewing their terms are Barb Lundy and Jane Woolley. Would, you, would all of the rest of you who are serving on boards and council uh, please stand also? Brothers and sisters in Christ, you have been elected to positions of leadership. We rejoice in the gifts God has given you and your willingness to offer them in this service. So I ask, as you have been called and empowered, do you promise to nurture the faith in God by diligent prayer and worship? Will you seek to lead this community in ministry and action? And will you accept the responsibilities given to you as you serve faithfully? If so, answer, I will with the help of God. Congregation, together with these leaders, we are called to live together the life that uh, the life of discipleship. Will you receive these leaders and work with them, pray with them and support them for the sake of our community? We will with the help of God. Then may God bless us as we continue to work together in this new year. Let's add our applause for these leaders. So that's part of our offering. I also want to recognize the offerings we are able to give. If you didn't notice, we, our offering plate is at the door. You can give as you come or go. You can give electronically. There's all different ways. Those offerings 
help us be a community that offers First Communion class and does Super Bowl offerings which will benefit our food shelf uh, and also continues to uh, be a, a community of light in this community, uh, community of faith that is light in this area of our world. So thank you for those offerings. Let us stand and sing, uh, create in me, uh, as the offerings are brought forward. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew the right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and uphold me with your free spirit. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, maker of all things. Through your goodness you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love. Through the same, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. By the leading of a star, he was shown forth to all the nations. In the waters of the Jordan, you proclaimed him your beloved son. And in the miracle of water turned to wine, he revealed your glory. So with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, Drink of this, all of you. This cup is a new covenant in my blood. It is shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We'll use the contemporary Lord's Prayer on the left-hand side. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The table is ready and you're invited to come. In your bulletin are what we call our table instructions. If you're visiting, you might want to look at those, but let me just say a few of them. 
will commune at the rail and you'll receive uh, bread and wine. If you are, are, are not receiving today, just keep your hands below the rail and to indicate to us uh, that, um, and you'll receive a blessing. Uh, if you would like to commune with gluten-free bread or grape juice instead, we have that on our trays, and you could just tell the server that. Uh, once you have communed, you're welcome to go back to your seats. If you're unable to come forward, please uh, indicate that to the usher, and we will bring the sacrament to you. Uh, we'll be, after the bell choir uh, does their anthem, we'll be joining in song uh, during this time of communion, so you can see the hymns indicated in the bulletin. With that, I'll ask our servants to come up, and the ushers will direct you forward.
let this wine also be part of our meal too. Please stand as you're able. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, we give you thanks that you have set before us this feast of body and blood. By your spirit, strengthen us to serve all in need and to give ourselves away as bread for the hungry, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Just want to ask the fifth graders to stay, uh, and we'll get a picture of the class uh, after the worship service. So. Let us conclude by singing, The Spirit Sends Us Forth, number 551.
Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.